Hello friends, today we're going to be jumping right back into our slime fun tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at the portable energy, though not quite batteries, of magnesium salt. But before we begin, I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Every time someone does, YouTube gives me a notification about it, and it just makes my day. So if you could please consider checking to see if you're subscribed, it would mean the world to me. It's completely free, it only takes two seconds, and if you want to unsubscribe later, it's totally okay. Thank you all so much for helping to change my life one sub at a time. Alright, so now that we have an automatic dust generator, which, if you don't yet, the tutorial for that is right here you might start to notice some dust being used a lot more than others. We always seem to find ourselves running out of copper, and conversely, we always seem to be running out of space to store our magnesium. Magnesium is seldom used in slime fun crafting recipes, so what do we do with it? Introducing the Magnesium Salt Generator. It doesn't produce a crazy amount of energy, but it's pretty powerful. 36 joules per second, where each magnesium salt lasts 20 seconds. This means that with three stacks of magnesium salt, we can fuel the generator for a bit over an hour. And since it requires so little additional infrastructure, only needing an energy regulator to function, and the fuel is stackable and relatively useless otherwise, this is one of our most portable energy systems. We can use this to power geominers and other mobile energy using machines without having to set up and tear down so much. In addition, since magnesium is seldom used for other things, this is the closest thing we have to being able to trade stored energy, where each magnesium salt is worth 720. 20 joules. This is our crafting recipe for the magnesium power generator, but how do we make the magnesium salt? Well, to start off, it's going to require energy to produce the magnesium salt. With the design I'll be showing today, each magnesium salt will require a total of 130 joules to make. Not 130 joules per second, of course, this is just a total energy amount. The magnesium salt itself is worth 720 joules, meaning that we will profit 590 joules each. We're going to be attaching our magnesium salt system to the end of our dust generator system, so the size of our new system depends on the size of our dust one. The design that I showed in our dust generation video produced one dust per second, meaning that on average, it'll produce one magnesium per nine seconds. With this rate in mind, we will construct our attachment. If you scaled up the dust generator, then scale up the attachment by the same amount. In total, we're gonna need two electric ore grinders of tier two, one heated pressure chamber, a dispenser, an oak fence, and a cauldron to make a basic dust washer, which is a basic machine, one output chest, also a basic machine, one tier three electric furnace, a minor Android, and two better auto kelp farms. We'll also need eight energy connectors, one cargo manager, 10 cargo connectors, 11 cargo inputs, and 11 cargo outputs. The total materials for all this is here, separated by what we need for our machines and our Androids, what we need for our energy, and what we need for our cargo. First, we're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of gap. I'm gonna leave five blocks, and then I'm gonna place a block and put our ele first electric ore grinder. Then we're going to place another block and place our second one. Now these blocks don't actually need to be here, but we just want to elevate a little bit. Now we're going to go one into the ground, place a cauldron, place an oak fence, and place our dispenser. Now this is our ore washer basic machine. The reason we can't use an electric dust washer is because that actually won't function for turning sand into salt, which we need in order to make our magnesium salt. Now we're going to want to place our heated pressure chamber just next to that. And this is basically the entire process we need in order to create magnesium salt. Now we want to make sure that our energy has power, so we're going to place an energy connector six blocks away. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place another one here, another one here, and another one here. Now all of these are going to have power. Now we don't want our cargo system to get mixed up with our system's cargo system, so we're going to want to make sure that none of our connectors are going to intertwine with our connectors or our cargo manager for our magnesium salt generator. So what we're going to do is we're going to place an input node on our, the bottom most magnesium chest so that it doesn't mix up with anything else leave a bit of room, place our cargo manager and a connector on top. We're going to want to go to the other side and place a connector on this side. And now we've got all of our spaces connected for what we're going to want to do. We can go ahead and place a double chest here and connect as many hopper systems as we would like to have as much storage as we want. For now, I'm just going to have three. Now, as I said, we're also going to need one minor android to produce the cobble and two better auto kelp farms to produce enough kelp to keep it running all the time. Now we won't actually need as much cobble as we're going to be producing, but the reason we don't want to have less auto kelp farms is because when the Android runs out of power, it stops doing its script, requiring us to go over and turn it on again for its script to continue. 
this is really annoying. So it's better to have more dried kelp blocks than less. Now that we've got our two better auto kelp farms, which if you need a refresher on how to make, the link is right here. We can go ahead and make our Android's cobblestone generator in order to be able to fuel it. Now what I've done here is I've just made a hopper link between the top and bottom kelp farms so that we don't have to connect cargo to both of them, rather just from the bottom one. So just like before, we're gonna wanna place our electric furnace and our chest in order to store the dried kelp and a chest to store the dried kelp blocks. We now need to make a cobblestone generator for our Android to automatically run. And if you needed the Android script for that, you can click right here. Just like always, we're gonna put the fuel on the right, the items on the left, leave a hole here, build up two. And this is all we need for a cobblestone generator. Place our water, place our lava, and cobblestone. We're just gonna wanna place a chest almost in line with our cargo manager so that we can have it store our cobble here and transfer it to our electric ore grinder there. And connect our electric furnace. We can just go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is unfortunate. We can just place it right there and it's powered. Starting from the beginning with the kelp, we just need to place an input node on our kelp chest, an output node on our electric furnace, an input node on our electric furnace, an output node on our dried kelp chest, and an input node on our dried kelp block chest. Just like before, unfortunately, there is no way to fully automate the transition between dried kelp and dried kelp blocks because Slime Fun Auto Crafting is limited to enhanced crafting recipes only. If Slime Fun ever adds an empowered miner option, at that point, we will be able to fully automate the process with uranium. But until then, we can just place a crafting table right here so that we can more simply take the dried kelp from here, craft it, and put it in here. Now we need to put an output node on our fuel side and an input node on our item side. An output on this chest, an input on this chest. I did a dumb and had you guys build it wrong, so just break that heated pressure chamber, put an output chest, then put the heated pressure chamber, and then put your chest system. My bad, uh, I'm very sorry. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we just need to place an output on this, an output on this, an output on this, an output on this, and an output on this. On this side, we're gonna place an input, an input, an input, and an input. And we need to hook up this side with our cargo connectors, so we can just run it from here down to here, here, one above, one right here, one right here, and one right there. Now this connector design can be done in a bit more efficient way if you just run it underneath, but this is definitely the simplest way. Now, everything is in place for magnesium salt generation. All we need to do is configure it. So starting with our kelp farm, we just need to place one kelp in, whitelisted, no need to round robin, and on channel one. Make sure our output is set to channel one. Our electric furnace input, we wanna set that to channel two, no need for round robin, whitelisted with dried kelp. We're gonna place this on channel two. Now this is where the manual action happens, so we're gonna place dried kelp blocks in this input, put this on channel three, round robin on, in case we ever decide to scale up and make sure our Android's fuel interface is set to channel three. Our Android item interface needs to be set to channel four, round robin off, white listing, cobblestone, and our cobble chest storage needs to be set on channel four. This chest serves as a buffer between our Androids and our system so that we have a greater time to respond to potential sources of waste. On our cobble chest input node, we just need to put our cobblestone in on channel six, round robin off, white listed. On our first electric ore grinder, we set this to channel six, set our output to channel seven, whitelisting gravel. Set our second ore grinder to channel seven, whitelist our channel eight, ore grinder to sand, set our manual dust washer to channel eight, and set our input node on the output chest to channel nine, outputting salt. Then finally, we can set our heated pressure chamber to channel nine and our output to channel 10 with magnesium salt. Now you may not have this yet, uh, so you can wait to have it. It'll, it'll just store in here and it, it won't be a problem. And set your final output to channel 10. Now, in our heated pressure chamber, we're gonna wanna put a few salt to start off with. Preferably a lot of salt because the Slime Fun Cargo will try to fill up this heated pressure chamber's input slot with anything it can from channel nine. Now we're also gonna be putting magnesium in on channel nine. So we don't want it to run out of salt and have two slots of magnesium because that won't do anything for us. But since we're producing salt at a higher rate than we're producing magnesium, it shouldn't happen too often. But should it ever happen, all you need to do to unclog it is take the extra magnesium or extra salt out. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of options for working around this at the moment. Lastly, all we need to do is take this input node, put it also on channel nine, 
put our magnesium in and have it whitelisted. And already we should be seeing the process begin. Our kelp will power our Android. It'll generate cobble, put it in this chest, turn the cobble into gravel, turn the gravel into sand. We will then wash the sand into salt, at which point magnesium and salt will be put together in the magnesium generator to produce magnesium salt. Now, just like with our dust generator, where we need to craft dried kelp blocks from dried kelp every once in a while, we'll need to do that same thing here, but every once in a while, we'll need to walk through and right click on this in order to turn the sand into salt. Now, as always, I suggest just going into your controls, turning your right click to R and just doing this. And as at an incredibly fast rate, it'll turn all the sand it can into salt. Now, this is kind of an annoying thing as every time you do nine stacks of it, which should only take maybe 30 or 45 seconds, it'll generate enough salt to fuel magnesium for 36 minutes. Now, this is rather annoying, but there unfortunately is no way around it in the current version of Slime Fun, due to the fact that the only way to generate salt is by one, geomining, which can't be perfectly automated, and two, by dust washing, which we can't automate salt from sand with electricity. So this semi-automatic method is the best we can do for generating magnesium salt at the current moment. But one thing we can do to make it so that we have to do this less often is place a chest right here, so that we can have a sand buffer. All we have to do in order to make that happen is change our dust washer's output to channel 16, place a connector right here, an output here and an input here. We can take a look at our sand input right here and change this output to channel eight to replace and then set this sand to channel 16. Now this will allow a buffer of sand so that instead of only being able to do nine plus two, 11 at a time, which will function for about 40 minutes. Instead, you'll be able to convert a maximum of 11 plus 54, which is 65 at a time, which should run for about four hours. Now, the reason we can't just set both of these to the same channel and set this to round robin on is because in the current version of Slime Fund, there is a bug where if things are being transferred in and out of the same channel on the same material, it will cause the erasure of some of those items per cycle. Now, this bug may be fixed in the future and if slash when it is, then we'll be able to have our buffers on their own channels and put it in every output slot in every one of our machines so that we can have the maximum efficiency for all of our designs. But that's about it. Now you have a working almost automatic magnesium salt generator to fuel your portable energy endeavors. Should there ever be a way to automate this completely, you guys can rest assured knowing that I'll find out and show you guys how. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It's free, it takes two seconds, and it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.